Welcome to Disney A, the Canadian-themed Disney travel podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Brandon. And I'm Krista, and I like that you're back to the pointing. Oh, I gotta, yeah. <laughs> Who's got two thumbs and is podcasting. This guy. <laughs> um, Brandon, how are you this week? Uh, you know, I'm pretty good. We're yeah. uh, we're feeling a little better, a little, little more healthier. Yeah, we talked last week how we've been sick. The the, the sickness has been hanging mm. on, but I'm I'm almost like I'm like ninety percent. Yeah, me too. I think. Yeah. Um, also, You're like eighty seven percent because I got to win a little. Bit oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Because <laughs> you got to win. I got to win. Not that you're competitive. No. No. Oh, okay. Um, also, what are you currently drinking? Um, this is just a simple uh, gin and peach bubbly, nice mm-hmm. little refreshing summer drink. Yeah. How about yourself? So I'm this, not. This, this is a surprise. I don't know. Yes. Something something weird and interesting. Apparently. Uh, no, not necessarily weird uh. and interesting. Just unusual for me at this time of year. Normally, I'm like all tropical. I was feeling it's kind of a dreary day, and I was doing a lot of manual labor just recently. Like I was working, we have an Airbnb and I was... Lifting weights? Yeah, that's almost what I was doing. Oh. Um, but I was doing a bunch of stuff and I came in and I was like, I want a cup of tea. So I'm having a cup of summertime tea with vodka. <laughs> vodka tea? Yeah, I'm having vodka tea. <laughs> that's in- that is interesting. Yeah. That, that's okay. Yeah, so anyway, that's what I'm having. It's not that it was raining earlier, but it it turned into a, like a nicer evening. Yeah, it's a much know. nicer evening than it was. Like it's nicer now. Anyway, we're recording this, this Saturday is why, evening. Th- this is why you're eighty seven percent because you still need tea to make yourself feel oh, better. Oh, tastes pretty good. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> also, um, Brandon, what is your nerd thing this week? Well, we have talked about it before. Um, the the whole Last of Us being filmed in our neck of the woods, yes, and things like that. Well. We finally finished the series, mm-hmm. and it inspired me to replay the game. Yes. Or, well, I had played the game before, but I didn't get very far because I was annoyed at it. Um, but I, I started it again mm-hmm. and did much better this time. Nice. I like it makes more sense and stuff to me. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're almost done. Almost done. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of games, I so. It's been a while since I had this as my nerd thing. <laughs> uh-huh. So my nerd thing currently is uh, Disney Dreamlight Valley is doing like dream snaps now. So, oh yeah, yeah, snap, yeah. snap, Ex- exactly. So oh, the last I have Nintendo thumb. Uh, so with the last update, um, it's a way to get like moonstones, which is one of the the, the uh, in-game currency type thing. The premium currency, yeah, of the game. Yeah, it's free to play. Yes, yes, okay, okay. But, uh, yeah, you do, like, these pictures and you upload them. And I've not been, like, winning, but I've been doing all right with them. It's a couple weeks. It's like it's like free money. Yeah. But it's fun. Anyway. And, uh, yeah, it was, like, with the last update and we got vanilla pee and it was, like, a bunch of summer. That was an update. So, anyway, I've been enjoying that. But you that. still don't have Ralph and that is a travesty. Agreed. Okay. But I also got her up to level 10. Mm-hmm. So everyone's maxed out now and I've been decorating. Um... Also, Brandon, what are we actually talking about this week? We've done all our intro stuff and haven't even explained what we're going to talk about. Well, we always talk about our intro stuff before we talk about what we're going to talk about. Okay. Well, usually. Sometimes, I don't know. yeah. I don't uh, know. What are we talking about this week? We are taught. We are. This is your idea. It was. Oh. Wow. <laughs> There's your problem. <laughs> no, uh, we are going to be. It's been a long time coming, but we are actually t- doing our 2000s episode. Oh, we're back to the decades. It's a decades, yeah. Well, we're almost done, honestly, because we're only going to go as far as 2010 because the 2020s haven't finished yet. So they haven't. They haven't. I mean, I, mean, I know be, 20. It's, it's going to feel like the, like yeah. It's going to be like tomorrow that they're done. Well, the yes. way the years go. The way it felt actually 2020 was like three years, and since then has been like one. Yeah. <laughs> but Time any- compresses when you get old, like like me. <laughs> But anyway, so we, we did do uh, the 2000s. It's, well, I'll talk about some stuff in there, but it's kind of cool to get back on that because it's been a while since we've been looking at the decades. And yeah, you had the idea, like, we were waiting to watch Emperor's New Groove, and then right after we recorded last week, you were like, let's just go watch it right now. And we did. And we did. So now we're going to So, so I might, we might talk about that more, more than, than the, the other others, ones. It's well, pre- you might be fresh. pretty critical on some of the other ones though. Like I think yes. you like yeah, I, there's there's stuff the, about the movies. So I think I think the 2000s is is like the hipster decade 
Yeah, there's it, some really good hipster ones in there, and there's some ones that, like... There's it, some bad ones, yeah. but, like, I think it's the hipster decade. There's, like, way too many that are labeled as, like, underrated, yeah. and I don't, I, don't, I don't think they're all underrated. No, I think two of them are. Um, also... Well, we'll talk about it more, but there's the only Disney animated mo- feature-length film that I still have not watched is in the 2000s. Ah, fail. I know, I know. I just go watch it after this. <laughs> if you haven't seen it... Oh, is it Meet the Robinsons? Yes. Yeah. You've got a big head and little arms. That's, that's all, all I know from that's, it. That's all I need all to know. I, know yeah. I, I don't think it's very good, <laughs> but mm. okay. We'll Judging talk without about it. seeing, that's not very no. that's not very nice nope. of me. But I also don't think it's very good. So no, you know. we'll, we'll talk we'll talk about the movies when we get there, though. Um, also, Brandon, as our last thing of the intro, my new favorite thing that you do, better know a listener. Yes. Do you have something for I, us? I, I I actually did prepare this. So oh, okay. I have to do homework for this now. Aww, it's like terrible. Your idea. Um. It, well, I think it was a good idea. Mm-hmm. No. The uh, this week we're gonna visit. Janesville, Wisconsin. Well, we're in Wisconsin, okay. Yeah, like kind of by the Great Lakes and stuff. I guess so. Um, they're they're a little like Canadian-ish up there. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, because uh, they're so far north. And yeah, any of the just, northern states, I always you think is gotta, like you got to yeah. go that way. Um, Janesville is known, not as Canadian as Minnesota. Not no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but still like Minnesota yeah. and Wisconsin. Yeah, I get it. They're they're, they're in that same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're in that same vein, so, you know, mm-hmm. what can you do? But Janesville. Okay. If you didn't know. I, d- I didn't. It's known as Wisconsin's Park Place. Oh, okay. Uh, they have a whole crap load of parks, apparently. Oh, cool. Uh, and, it, like, just massive amounts of parks, uh, tw- like 2,600 acres worth of parks in in and around the city. Really? Um, it's also kind of weird because there's also a Janesville <laughs> town that's like right beside it, so I think that must be a little confusing. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Yeah. But I don't we're know. looking at Janesville, not Janesville town. Yes. Okay. Janesville, the city, I'm assuming, I don't know, it doesn't, like I say, it's IP based and it just says Janesville, so I'm assuming it's Janesville, the city. <laughs> Interesting. Well, if you are listening from Janesville, you have to let us know. Um. They're also very well known Mm -hmm. for the world's greatest water ski team. What? Yes. Really? The Rock Aqua Jays. The Rock Aqua Jays. They've won 62 tournament victories and 19 U.S. national championships. It's kind of a strange thing to be known for, but... uh, Huh. Yeah, like a big big old water ski. Oh, that's so cool. Big old water ski team. Um, they used to be home to the Chicago Cubs uh, minor league team. Oh. This was a long time ago. Right. In, like, the 40s, they were called the Janesville Cubs. Okay. Um, but in 1946, they were called the Bears. Oh, the Bears. The Bears. Which is kind of funny because, like, the Cubs, are, like, a bear cub is young. That would that makes sense. The, I like it. The, mi- yeah. the minor league team being called the Bears is kind of weird, but it should be the other way around. Yeah, it should be. <laughs> anyway, yeah. whatever. Um, they they also have a hockey team in the North American Hockey League, which I'm not really sure uh, what that is. <laughs> Never heard of it before. And you're a hockey fan. And I'm a hockey fan. So <laughs> you got so you got the NHL, which is like mm-hmm. your 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 top end, mm-hmm. and then you got the AHL, which is the American Hockey League. That's the farm teams, right? And then the farm teams for the AHL is called the ECHL. The uh, I don't know what that stands for because it's like little many things. Okay, it's it's right. <laughs> it's the minor minor league, so I don't really know. But I've just heard the the the, the abbreviation, C-H-L. and okay. that's and that's whatever. And then and then you, in Canada you have the the juniors, which yes. is the CHL. So I don't know. I don't know what the uh, North American Hockey League is, but they have a team, and it's the Janesville Jets. Oh, good name. When Go you're jets. a jet, you're a yeah. jet all the way from yeah, you, like that. Exactly. It's the jets. Um, <laughs> and uh, apparently, uh, it was um, also really famous because some some guy that lived there uh, convinced Abraham Lincoln to do a speech there at one time. So oh. that, that that's another claim to fame that they have. Apparently, Abraham Lincoln did a speech there. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Jane, Janeville? Janesville. Janesville. No, Janesville. Not, uh, at first I was really excited. I thought maybe it was like Firefly yeah, type of thing. Yeah, and they no. wore, wore their 
really cool toques. Yeah. No, oh. it wasn't. Oh, okay. It's uh, water skiing and... Well, the water skiing thing, you showed me a picture, and that looks super cool. Yeah. Very cool. Go water skiing. So if you're from Janesville, also enlighten us on this whole, what's the difference between Janesville and Janesville Town thing? Yeah, kind of kind of strange. <laughs> eh. Oh, that's cool, though. Um, we don't have any Marvel news right now. We are counting down currently to Ahsoka. Um, that's coming up. But other than that, yeah, let's head to the news. Disney A News Update. News. 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 Much less news than last time when we were catching up like three weeks worth of news. Um, a big thing, a bunch of news came out about the Disney company finances, streaming, and, and so on. So here's the rundown. A recent article from The Hollywood Reporter has breathed new life into the long-standing rumor of a potential Apple acquisition of the Walt Disney Company. I... I still press X for doubt on this. Mm-hmm. I, I I don't know. I, I don't think Apple's in the business of... They used to be really tightly tied to Pixar, but... Yeah, Steve Jobs was like a... Like, yeah. Yeah, but... Oh, uh, th- yeah, Pixar made, like... Because I have a rundown of, the comp- of what was going on in the 2000s, and Pixar was, like, all over that because Disney was trying to acquire it and then eventually did. It was a whole just, thing. I just don't. I just don't see it. Like I don't. I don't know what the upside is for Apple. Hmm. From like a business standpoint. From a business standpoint. Right. All right. Well, anyway. So that you know made news again and then kind of fizzled, but it's there. That rumor is still and, persisting, I guess. And. I don't. I don't know. Like the biz. Like the movie side would probably be fine, but I'd be like super concerned about the parks. Yeah myself if if apple if apple did pull mm-hmm. the trigger on that that would yeah so would be concerning yeah be i don't concerning, know yeah um so a lot of this other news is coming from the 2023 third quarter earnings call um disney parks and resorts experienced a decent improvement over the previous quarter which is you know okay earning stuff and direct to customer revenues have increased so people are like this is all giving more credence to this whole like yay Bob Iger stuff. Um, okay, so <laughs> yes, I understand. I'm gonna, understand. gonna pull, I'm just gonna pour a little bit of cold water on that. <laughs> Comparing to the previous quarter, okay, it's superfluous. It, there are so many factors, especially when you're talking about the parks. Summer's gonna be a little bit more busier than uh, the shoulder season. Yes. Like a better a better comparison is a year over year same quarter. Right. That, um, that's apples to apples. You're you're going apples to grapes and that makes no sense. So how and there was also basically according to deadline and official reports from the Walt Disney Company, a mixed third quarter for 2023 saw some success, reduced losses and a few disappointments overall. And they wanted to note that, yes, Disney parks and resorts have seen an overall strong increase. However, most of it is actually attributed to strong performances from international destinations as well as the cruise line. Uh, so people are cruising. Cruise, cruises, like, during COVID, mm-hmm. that, like, a lot of pundits and experts were like, cruises are not going to happen ever again. Like, cruises are is a dying industry. Exactly the opposite. Um, literally exactly the opposite as soon as as soon as things opened up and cruise lines were allowed to go again it was like huge boom they're like royal caribbean is building massive ship after massive ship and disney themselves are building new ships Uh, yeah and yeah no cruising is huge right now and doesn't slow any signs of slowing down no if anything else it's booming no it it is booming like Oh, okay, so during the earnings call, um, Disney announced a significant price increase for Disney Plus and Hulu's premium plans, also sharing news that an ad-free bundle of both platforms will roll out in the U.S., which is, you know, the news is coming from the U.S., right? Which means that there's there's an ad option. Yes. I don't, like... This is all foreign to us in in Canada because we're foreign. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but we don't have an ad option no, for Disney don't. Plus, yeah. and we also don't have Hulu. So mm-hmm. who knows how that's going to affect 
us? I was wondering. But um, this is all just stuff being reported from this earnings call, right? They also did t- talk about how they're going to crack down on Next password point on sharing, yeah. um, account sharing, yeah. and who knows how that rolls out. And that's... Yeah, the streaming, streaming services are shooting themselves in the foot with this mm-hmm. because streaming services, there's so many now, but it, it it's... It's an easier pill to swallow if you can, yeah. If, if you can have multiple households doing right. it, right? If you're like, well, you know, in the family, so and so will cover Netflix, and so and so will cover Disney, and so and so will cover and, Amazon, and whatever. You don't go outrageous with it, no. Um, but like, we share a lot of streaming services with my parents, for mm-hmm. example, and uh, Netflix famously cracked down on password yeah. sharing. They've been the first ones to to really go hard on it, and it's all it's all IP based. And, and we canceled. We yeah, can- we canceled our Netflix. We canceled Netflix, and we haven't been subscribed to it for almost a year now. Yeah. And uh, so that's, like, and we weren't the only one, so Netflix has lost yeah. Has lost money on it. I think their subscriber base went down after they announced this, and I, I think that's just dumb. Like, yeah. I get, I get them being like, well, there's two households using this service. They should both be paying for it, but what will... The, op- the the other option is not both of them paying for it. It's zero of them paying for it, and right. so you lose out on that money. Like I, I don't know. <sighs> yeah. So they, he says he's going to be looking at it in twenty twenty four. So we'll see. Oh, what that's next that, year. Yes, we'll see <laughs> what that means, basically. But it's not like immediately this is happening. Is my point? Yeah. But they're definitely looking into it. Amid ongoing rumors and speculation over the potential sale of the Walt Disney Company to Apple, CEO Bob Iger is refusing to entertain the discussion. Yes. He says. Yeah, I don't. It, it it would. I think it would have to be a hostile takeover. Oh, one of those almost happened in the 2000s. I'm going to talk about it. Um, and that's messy and concerning. And I don't think Disney's quite weak enough to. I don't see why Apple would decide that that's a good course of action. And as a buyer, doing a hostile takeover is messy and stuff too. So like, like why? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, it does. It doesn't make a super amount of sense to me. But whatever. Um, and then the last point from this earnings call is the. Um, See the again, Bob Iger shared a statement on the ongoing strikes in Hollywood, saying he is personally committed to working towards doing what he can to help end them. That's lip service, but it is lip service. But I was like, that's interesting lip service. I thought th- it's been going on a long, long time. Well, now. companies are starting to lose money now, so all of a sudden they're like, oh, we're gonna come to the table, basically. Yes, and it has to go on for a long, long time because there's enough projects in the can that they can they can outlast for a little while but uh yeah hopefully they figure something out Uh. um speaking oh speaking of uh strikes and and unions okay and And, disney and then i'm gonna go back to disneyland news um big big news Mm -hmm. uh vfx artists uh specifically for disney which was making the news um have agreed to unionize Really? Yeah. So Interesting. They've made the news a lot over the the recent years of how poorly Disney has treated VFX artists, um, sp- specifically with like the Marvel stuff and right. so many projects, and they they do reshoots at the last minute, and they have to change all this stuff, and they move from project to project, and mm-hmm. doing like ridiculous overtime and barely paying them anything so yeah they're gonna unionize and be like no more of that ah good for them because the, all these studios were independent so disney would be like okay well if you're not gonna do what we ask we're gonna take it to this other studio and all right. these independent contractors type of situation so no they've decided to unionize and be like, no more of that interesting so i think that's good well i think so too but so yeah yeah very cool that was that was big news. That's that is. I'm surprised it wasn't on your list, but um, yeah, that's awesome actually. That is big news. Mm-hmm. Oh, very cool. Uh, I just have a couple minor things here. More uh, Disneyland updates. Oh, like here. the Seven Dwarfs. Like the Seven. Oh, yeah, actually, they're, mi- they're, <laughs> they're minors. minors yeah. yeah. Um, Space Mountain at Disneyland Park will be closed for refurbishment beginning September 18th. There's no current reopening date. Sp- what is Space, Space Mountain? Mountain? September 18th. 
That's weird. Yep. Um, there are um, ongoing changes to San Francisco. There's further developments to the bridge, more street art, and then the turbine blenders, more art and fictional advertisements have been added. Yeah, we saw that on a video. Yep. And then a Magic Key dance party is coming to Disney California in August. The event will be taking place at the Disney Junior Theater in Hollywood Land on select dates for Magic Key holders. This uh, is terrible. Um, terrible news. <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> anyway, no, they haven't done a Magic Key dance party before. So anyway, that was, that was it. That was it. That was my news. What if I want to dance and I'm not a Magic Key holder? You don't holder? get to. Yeah, they... They come and tase you or something? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm sure you need to have your magic key to get into the party. D- weird. Okay. Anyway. It's like a magic key specific event is the thing. Super. Great. Go head over to the main topic? Yes. What's in the bag? It, it's not a head. It's just content. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Mm. Disney A grab bag. Okay, so I had some fun doing some research for the 2000s. It's been a while since we did our decades. We actually had to break the 90s up into two categories. The 90s were good. Uh 2000s, meh. meh. Well, a bunch of stuff happened in the 2000s. Yeah, a bunch of stuff. Not Um, not so much the movies, though. Right, so I'm going to break... I have this broken up into categories. Um, There's general company stuff. There's parks, Pixar... Um, notable Disney live action movies and then the Disney animated movies. And that's kind of going to be the order I go through. Okay, so I'm going to run through a bunch of stuff. A bunch of stuff. Let's go company first of all. Okay. So, and this is kind of in like chronological order, all of this stuff. Okay. So in 2001, the company purchased Fox Family Worldwide, including famously ABC. Yes, okay. Okay. That's when they got ABC. That's that, when they got ABC. They got makes... a lot of stuff in the 2000s. Let's just let's just hold on mm. to that right now. Roy E. Disney resigned in 2003, took some people with them, and formed a group called Save Disney. And this was all to, uh, like, basically get public pressure to oust Michael Eisner right. at the time. Right. So this is 2003. Shortly after that, Disney sold the Angels baseball team. Okay. There was an attempted hostile takeover by Comcast. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so they this own was, NBC. Yes, so, this yeah. was like mm-hmm. 2003 into 2004. In fact, I think the hostile takeover was like right at the beginning of 2004. Eisner was stripped of his chairmanship following a no confidence vote in 2004. The company purchased Muppets and a few other Jim Henson works, most notably um, Bear in the Big Blue House was like a huge children's show at the I, time. I remember seeing that on. I've never. I've literally never watched. I watched it. A and it was actually. It, it was great. Um, my little sister used to watch it. It was like really well done for like a little preschool. I had no idea that was a Jim Henson thing. Yeah, totally. Fascinating. It it, it, it makes more sense knowing it's a Jim Henson thing. Um, because it's like way too well done for other mm, stuff at the time. Right. Um, uh, the Disney store chain, like Disney stores, was sold to the children's place, but then later at the end of the decade was repurchased by Disney. Basically, Disney was losing a bunch of money, didn't have money, and so they were like... <laughs> they pulled a Marvel, yeah. Okay. Right? Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, I think it was in 2009 they rebought it. Um, Mighty Ducks of Anaheim was sold, which then became... Yeah. Yeah, okay. So... We'll go back to the sports sphere. You were talking about the Angels and, and the Mighty Ducks. Uh, so they had a couple of, of movies, yep. Angels in the Outfield, and this, so then they got, they got, <coughs> they got a, a baseball team. Yeah, and the Angels. Called yeah. the Angels, yeah. And then, um, of course, the, the Mighty Ducks was a movie, and, mm-hmm. and then they, they got an expansion team yeah, in the, the NHL, the, the Mighty Ducks, and they owned both of those for a while, and then they're like, wait, this isn't working. Yeah, in the um, 2000s. They, the, both of those teams still exist, and they're both still in Anaheim. Mm-hmm. And uh, except the Angels are called the Los Angeles Angels. They're not. They're not in Los Angeles. They're in Anaheim. <laughs> they're definitely in Anaheim. Uh, the Anaheim Ducks. They're not the Mighty Ducks anymore because nope. the Mighty Ducks is, is trademarked. Yeah, uh, Disney still mm-hmm. exists. They once in a while they'll they'll use the old logo. Though. Yeah, that's fun. I I love it when they do. Yeah. 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 That, it's so 90s, it hurts, but it's a great... I love it. It's a great sports logo. Yeah, that's it's so good. It's really good. 
Hey, let's shout out the fact that the episode where we talked about all the Mighty Ducks movies. We watched them all in a row. Yeah. <laughs> Mistakes were made. <laughs> Mostly watching them all in a row. Yeah. The first one, we're like, this is great. We can totally keep going. No. And then, then it stopped. The the uh, <laughs> the Disney Plus series was pretty good. The we first only watched season. the first season. Yeah. Um, and then the second season probably wasn't as good because yeah. uh, you didn't have Emilio, Emilio. And, and then it got canceled because yeah. no Emilio there's no Emilio um so after this happens uh Roy E. Disney rejoins the Disney company and is given the title director emeritus which he then holds until the end of his life which also comes in the 2000s Eisner then steps down as CEO as well and is replaced by Bob Iger the company is the first to license TV episodes for download in iTunes Apple Store. I thought that was cool. They like, yeah, and that was in 2005. They've, they've always had a little bit of a relationship with Apple kind of thing. Right? Well, and yeah. then, of course, you're talking Pixar. Yeah, right there. yeah. They finally acquired Pixar in 2006. So they were negotiating at the beginning of the decade, and then talks broke down and it was bad but they like made agreements with like oh steve jobs will stay on in this capacity and do like connection to pixar well and he was having his health problems yeah, exactly. at this time as well yeah. Yeah, yeah so it was 2006 they finally did acquire pixar walt disney feature animation was renamed the walt disney animation studios which is the name it still carries today the company dropped one buena vista brand from all its divisions disney mgm studios was renamed disney hollywood studios in 2008, Disney Broadway um, came w with The Little Mermaid. It wasn't its first Broadway hit, but it was like a huge Broadway hit. So that debuted in 2008. Um, Disney became, or sorry, Disney. Yeah, it wasn't its first Ooh. Broadway hit because I went to New York <laughs> and and saw Beauty and the Beast on Broadway. And that was really good. Um, and I think uh, Lion King was around in that in that same time as yes. well. Um yeah, I saw that on Broadway. I know. I went to Broadway. I know. Broadway hit. Yeah, thank you. Beauty and the Beast is great on Broadway, yeah, by the way. Uh -huh, yeah. uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Not that you would know. No. But... <laughs> <laughs> Come here. No, no violence is wrong. <laughs> um, D23, the official Disney fan club, launched in 2009. 2009 is also when Disney became an equity owner of Hulu. Roy E. Disney died of stomach cancer, which sounds terrible. Oh, yeah. That, in 2009 terrible, as well. Yeah. And Disney acquired Marvel Entertainment and its properties in 2009. So basically, a big portion of the decade was like, we have no money, we have to sell everything off. And then towards the end, they're like, oh, we're going to buy a bunch of stuff now. So they, they, bought, they bought Marvel in 2009. Marvel Entertainment in 2009. Which, which you know... <clears throat> You know what's really fascinating about that? Mm. Iron Man came out in 2008. I know. That's very fascinating. Yes, I know. I, I was wondering if that's what you were going to say. I actually know by heart when that movie came out because I taught it. Yeah. It, so, who who financed... Was Disney a producer on on that? You don't you don't know? Okay. I, I, I got I to gotta look this... I got to look this stuff up. I'm very curious. Okay. Well, you're talking a bunch of business stuff here. Yeah, no, it's fine. That's why I'm doing this first, and then I'm going to move to parks, and I'm going to go into the movies. The parks, the, a bunch of stuff happened in the parks, too. Oh, okay. Let's hear it. it like, Marvel Studios did it on on their own. Iron Man in 2008. Pr produced this movie. It was distributed by Paramount. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And it, it was it, it was probably like Marvel's last gasp mm -hmm. to like try and make something of themselves, and thank goodness for John Favreau and Kevin no Feige, I kidding. guess. Eh? Oh yeah. man, huh. <laughs> that's cool. Paramount. That's Paramount. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Let's go to parks now. So that was like the company in a nutshell. And I actually did mention one Parks thing in the wrong category. I apologize for that. That was the MGM Studios. You sure did, yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> Parks in the 2000s is very important to me because the first time I went to a Disney park was in the 2000s. Oh, yeah. 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 I, went to, I went to Disney World in 2000, 2000, 
two or it was still MGM Studios when I went. So okay, mm, um, we'll see if I have what year that was. <laughs> that would have been. It was two. It was two thousand, I think. Oh well, that okay. It was. It didn't change until like two thousand seven yeah, or eight. Yeah, I, th- I or think something. so. I don't know. Okay, I don't remember. So again, we're going back to the beginning of the decade. Okay, this is all kind of chronological. Probably the biggest thing, DCA opens in 2001, Disney's California Adventure, with Superstar Limo. Right. So <laughs> you talk you talked about the company stuff and like uh, the Save Disney movement. This was and, all and, part of it. And and kicking out uh, Eisner. Eisner. So Euro Disney and DCA were like the nails in his coffin. Yeah. Basically, yeah. they. They, they were his brainchild. He was like, big expansion, do this, blah, blah, blah. And they both didn't do wah, it very wah, good. Wah. <laughs> so not only Euro Disney, but in Disneyland Paris. And for different reasons. Which, true. Which is funny. They they tried to learn from their mistakes on Euro Disney, and they learned the wrong lessons. <laughs> yeah. They're like, we made mistakes, but they didn't no, get no, what the mistakes they were. They didn't understand. Uh, Euro Disney spent too much money in the wrong place. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, DCA spent not enough money in any place. Any place. <laughs> well, in during the 2000s, the second park at Disneyland Paris now is that's when that opened, and that was even to more lackluster than anything else. So anyway, 2001 DCA opens. 2001 is also when the Haunted Mansion Holiday was first introduced. Really? 2001. Not for as long or anything like that. I don't know what the first time was, the first time frame was. Has it changed since then, or is it was it very similar? It, it's similar, but it's like on a more grand scale now. That That's interesting, because um, Nightmare Before Christmas wasn't nope. super popular back nope. then. It was 2004 when I finally got a DVD copy. I loved Nightmare Before Christmas. I remember we bought it in, like, HMV. Yeah, you got it for me for yeah. Christmas. Oh, we found, like... It was it was something that was like hard to find. I couldn't find any merch or anything. And that year, it was like 2004, and for Halloween, my parents gave me, which I still have, a candle set with um, like some of the characters, like there's a zero one and a Jack one and a Sally one, um, in done in, in candles. And then you found me the movie finally, and that was the only merch you could find anywhere. And now it's everywhere. But yes, 2001, so even before that, Haunted Mansion Holiday. I, I would have lost a lot of money yeah. on, on betting when that was, like, a lot. So we talked about some not wow. great parks, but Tokyo Disney Sea did open. Ah. It, yep. Um, Neil Armstrong attended the reopening of Disneyland Space Mountain. That's when it was uh, did the major refurbishment. And it reopened during the 50th anniversary celebrations at the park. And, yeah, Neil Armstrong was in attendance for that. Is that not super cool? That is pretty cool. He was still alive then, yeah. I guess, eh? I was actually in Disneyland during the 50th I'm assuming he was still yeah, alive. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't they wicked didn't their like, Bernie's no, in out there. No, no, okay, that's good. Um, I was there during the 50th anniversary celebrations. It was very cool. Yeah, you I even have, have ears. You, yeah, you have the ears. I see them. Yeah, they're, they're gold. gold. Yep. Um, Hong Kong Disneyland also opened this uh, during this decade. That was in 2005. The Disney Resorts first celebrated Halloween time in 2006, which is now, like, the biggest celebration in Disneyland might be Halloween. It's, it's a toss-up between Halloween and Christmas, honestly. Um, I think Christmas might be slightly more, but, like, it's a big deal. I, I'm i going to say Halloween's bigger. Um, cause Maybe it's, in Disneyland. In, in Disneyland, it's 100% bigger because uh, it's longer. It is longer. That's and, true. And basically as busy and as big a deal mm-hmm. as Christmas. Christmas is, is very compact okay. at Disneyland. Mm-hmm. It's it's busy. Like I mean we were there we were there for the, the week after yeah. Christmas and it was like the busiest mm-hmm. week of the year last year. Yeah. Uh but it's only a week whereas mm-hmm. Halloween is l- like crazy. September and October. Right. And it's busy every weekend like Oogie Boogie Bash sells out in minutes. <laughs> And yeah. that, that, that's for two months, whereas as Christmas is like two weeks. Yeah, like the Christmas season is about a month. So I see what you're saying. But early December is not very busy. But exactly, yeah. So it would be interesting. The submarine voyage reopened as Finding Nemo in 2006. And in 2009 is when the reimagined Small World reopened with all the Disney character editions. So 
before we started going that again. Do, that does help uh, Small World a little bit. I like a little bit. Some purists don't like it. I like it. I wasn't sure, but they, I really liked it. Also, you they know, did a good job. Um, with, they did a good pirates. job with it. Mm-hmm. Pirates included, like that was redone with the, the Johnny Jack's, Depp, Jack Sparrow yeah, stuff. stuff that I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. And a big, that's I'm changed not a, a few fan. times. I'm not a big fan of that, but um, so that's like the big things I took from the parks. Mostly that, like, hey, a bunch of new parks opened. They, they were still going hard. The Eisner expansionism was still, like, the inertia of that was still happening, yeah. right? Which, and what's interesting is what is widely regarded as one of the best parks in the world, Tokyo Disney Sea, opened the same decade, like, right after DCA opened. Well, there and there's a reason for that that mm-hmm. we well know. The, the Tokyo Disneyland and Disney Sea after that where it was a partnership with a with yes. a Japanese company and they they footed the bill so yeah. so no money was no object <laughs> and they just said we want this done well we want this done well and like Tokyo Disneyland is like a clone of Disneyland yeah. so there there was no missing on that but then they were like we want something that's our own mm-hmm. and yeah. they they went for it and not only that culturally speaking like Tokyo and Japan in general loves Disney stuff yeah. so like it, it fits very well with the culture mm-hmm. unlike, unlike Disney. Disney, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah okay <laughs> and if and if you want to know more about all this business stuff and like the downfall of Iger uh, Defunct Land has a really good documentary oh about, Eisner the downfall of Eisner yeah, do- yeah. downfall of Eisner sorry mm-hmm. um ha- has a really great documentary true. about Euro Disney. And Defunct Land has some great documentaries. There's, period. There are several d- good documentaries, yeah. but there there is one that's like specifically about Eisner, Eisner and, specifically. And, yeah. Uh, the, the Euro Disney failure yeah. and the DCA failure. Imagineering like Story actually goes into it pretty well as well. A little, yeah, a little bit. It, it's 2000s. a bit. Like, Defunct Land's better yeah. for that. Specifically, uh, Imagineering right. Story has some cool mm-hmm. stuff about Imagineers, but like the business stuff, I would say Defunct Land is, and it's free on YouTube. So hey, hey, absolutely. Let's go to the movies. Okay, so like I said, Disney purchased Pixar during the 2000s. Here are the Pixar movies that came out during the 2000s. This somewhere before and somewhere after the acquisition. We're just gonna include them all. Monsters Inc. Mm-hmm. Finding Nemo. Basically, Pixar was the only thing that was doing good so movies well. at this point. <laughs> the Incredibles, Cars, Ratatouille, Wall-E, and Up. Oh, Up snuck in there. Two thousand nine. <laughs> <clears throat> I thought uh, I thought Wall-E was two thousand nine for some reason. Two thousand eight. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I know that one because I teach Wally every year. <laughs> Pixar was. Uh, Man, did they have some movies? They in the were 2000s. playing ball back <laughs> in the two thousands, weren't they? Oh. There are also some really like you're talking about how, like millennials and they just love, like, Disney during this era, the two thousands. Well, yes. Younger M- millennials. M- millennials um, grew up during the Renaissance, so they're Disney fans, and then. Yeah, so a lot of movies, which the live action ones would have gone unnoticed, are like now favorites of this like era. Live action ones. I'm getting to the animated ones last. We're ending with animated. Okay. Here are some of the most notable Disney movies: The Kid, starring Bruce Willis. Again, chronologically. Remember the Titans. Oh yeah, no. Remember the Titans is it's a cheesy sports movie, but it's like there's a lot of cheesy sports it's movies. It's pretty. It's pretty good. In the 2000s. No. No. I didn't include them all, but I remember the Titans was, was good. Yeah, it was big. The Princess Diaries, mm. which I still adore. Mm-mm. The Rookie, another sports movie. Cheesy sports movie, yeah. Mm-hmm. The Country Bears. No. I love it. No. Love that, it. It's a hard no for me. Tuck Everlasting. Holes. The Lizzie McGuire movie. Well, you skipped over Holes too fast. Okay, go, go back to Holes. Starring Shia LaBeouf. That's true. He, they, he was from the Disney Channel, of course, from Even mm-hmm. Stevens, so yeah. They, a bunch of Disney Channel stars have movies during this time, and also, like, they got into, like, adapting Children's of YA. Well, I mean, they've always done that, but there's some more recent acquisitions Holes. in this. Like Holes. The other one I said was Tuck Everlasting right before that, um, and then there's a couple more I, later. I, sh- I shrugged at that, yeah, <clears throat> The Lizzie McGuire movie, Oof. Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse oh. of the Black Pearl. That that was like a a like just crazy 
amazing. Wild swing that was a home run. 100%. Like, <clears throat> that should have not have worked. And it worked so yet well. It, yet it was, like, so good. Mm -hmm. And, yes, Johnny Depp was great as Jack Sparrow, but, like, everything, Every, about, everything, everything about that movie was, like, really, really good. Freaky Friday, the remake one, with Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh, you know, that... I liked it. That that was not bad. Yeah, I liked it. The Eddie Murphy Haunted Mansion. Wah, wah, wah. That, was, Pirates, that was bad. Pirates worked so well, we should do another one. And Eddie Murphy was on top of the world back then, and, and then he made a couple of really, really bad movies. Uh, and some life choices. And some <laughs> life choices. I wasn't going to throw that in there, but like the movies were on their own were terrible, so, you know. Speaking of sports movies, Miracle, hockey movie. That's based on a true story. Yes, it is. National Treasure. Hey, yeah. That, that was good. That was fun. I enjoyed the National Treasure movies. But... Yeah, the other one's coming up, too. Um, Ice Princess, which I really liked because it was a figure skating movie. Herbie Fully Loaded. The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. Bridge to Terabithia. Speaking of children's um, book adaptations. Happy, happy. So happy. Good good children's movie for, like, Lord of the Rings, but for children. <clears throat> exactly the same. That, that's how they advertised it. It was not. <laughs> a lot of people who... were in for a big surprise. Well, they should have read the book. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Hard. At World's End. Enchanted. So good. Pretty good. Pretty National good. Treasure Book of Secrets. I'm only including the next one because of the meme. Race to Witch Mountain. <laughs> the first of the Earth documentaries came out. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. special shout out this whole decade, High School Musical. Oof. <laughs> Did you just, you just start shaking? I have, some, I have some PTSD. You go listen to uh, my, <laughs> I'm not even going to say our, my <laughs> High School Musical episode and relish in my horrible torture and sadness. And then we should all be sad that we're not on Twitter anymore because live tweeting. You mean X? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> live tweet. You live tweeting, like watching that trilogy and then watching the Zombies trilogy was like the best thing in the entire world. Live Xing? We're not doing that. That sounds terrible. Yeah, no, it does sound terrible. That 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 that's that's what happens when you have a childish man that has billions of dollars. Yeah, that's what happens. Let's move on to the animated Disney movies. So here's the order, and then I'm going to ask you to pick your favorite. At the okay. End. Okay? Mm -hmm. And your your top and your least. Can I use the live action ones? Because I know which one I'm going to pick. No, because you'll pick Pirates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Just the animated. Okay. I was going to get you to rank them all, but I was like, there's no way you'd remember these. So just your top and okay, your least. Okay, just animated. Just animated. Ready? W Wally. No, that's... Pixar. Just animated Disney. Okay. Disney. Okay. Just Walt Disney Studios animation. Exactly. Okay. Here's the order chronologically first before you do this. And you're going to pick your favorite and your least favorite. Okay. Fantasia can... 2000. Oh, and also these these are theatrical releases. I'm not including... Please don't. Planes. Yeah, please don't do any of the direct-to-video nonsense. Um, I'm not including... Even though Return to Neverland is a theatrical release, I'm not going to include it. And I'm going to include it here to... Men um, well, I just mentioned it. Um, I'm going to include them here to mention, but don't pick them, is both the Tigger movie and Piglet's Big Movie. They're excellent, but don't pick them. Okay, Fantasia 2000... Dinosaur, The Emperor's New Groove, Atlantis the Lost Empire, Lilo and Stitch, Treasure Planet, Brother Bear, Home on the Range, Oh God, Chicken Little, Meet the Robinsons, Bolt, The Princess and the Frog, and then the um the, a Christmas Carol with the uh, Oh the creepy Jim Carrey Jim Christmas Carrey. Carol. Oh jeez. Wow. Oh, I have to pick a favorite out of those? Yes. Oh, that's easy. Do do I? Yeah. Well, I don't really like any of them, to be honest you with you. You didn't like Emperor's New Groove? No. <gasps> no. What is wrong with you? Well, I, we're going to get into that. You didn't like uh, I'm Atlantis? For, I, I'm going to I'm going to be prepared. So it, it it's between Atlantis and Treasure Planet. Mm, no, um, it's between Atlantis and and actually Princess and the Frog. 
mostly fun. because of the animation. Like mm-hmm. Princess and the Frog, it, it was the the last hurrah of like classical mm-hmm. animation, and it was done very very well. It was beautiful. Uh, I didn't like the plot as much, but mm-hmm. the villain was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Has a great and, song too. And Princess Tiana is like a pretty cool princess, mm-hmm. so I, yeah, you know, I'm gonna go Princess and the Frog. I'm not mad at that. Uh, yeah. I don't. Well, I actually would have said Princess and the Frog. My, my okay. actual favorite from this. You, you want to hear Piglet's my least favorite? You want to hear my least favorite? In a minute. My actual yeah. favorite from this is Piglet's Big Movie, <laughs> but I just you couldn't pick it. Piglet's Big Movie, yeah. which is t- is the Tigger movie the one that that has the heffalump? No, in that's it? the that's the third one that came out during this time. So it was Tigger's Big Movie. Sorry, Tigger Movie was like two thousand two thousand one something like that. Piglet's Big Movie was like two thousand. Five, two thousand six. I don't know. And then Pooh's Heffalump movie come, came out near the end of the decade. I know you have anger issues. I about it. I I have big problems with the, with that. What's with your that? least favorite? Home on the Range. That's a hundred. That I I'm trying not to pick the same as you, but it is Home on the Range. That is terrible. Is the, is it, the least. There's some bad ones in there. Home on the Range was horrific, and yeah. we, we saw that together in theaters. And I've never walked out of a movie. I kind of wanted to walk no, out of that We didn't. One. We didn't. I kind of wanted to, though. It was really bad. Um, The Princess and the Frog is probably my favorite from these, but you picked that, so I'll go... I haven't seen Treasure Planet in a long time, and I really, really liked it when I used to watch it. The, the animation in that is also very good. Yeah, and I, I really like that steampunk style, and I've, I've always liked they- retellings of you know, classic lit, and this was another version of doing that. I also think, like, I, I get that Atlantis and Treasure Planet and Emperor's New Groove are all, like, the hipster movies. They are. They're, um, they're all considered But I really, really and, like and, them. And, and, I really and. like them. But yeah, okay. I don't know. Maybe if I, if I had watched Treasure Planet recently... Yeah, that's fair. I'd be really torn because I also want to rewatch. I want to rewatch Atlantis and I want to rewatch Treasure Planet. I liked Emperor's New Groove more than I remembered liking it. Watching it just the other day, I was I was disappointed. Oh really? Okay, so I'm gonna go through these again, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, have you seen it? Do you remember what you thought? And I know we're gonna spend some time on Emperor's New Groove. Fantasia 2000. Fantasia 2000 is fine. I mean, it didn't need to happen it was this was a Roy E. Disney promise that he he wanted to fulfill and that's that's why it happened yeah like Fantasia the original stands on its own he didn't need to make new sequences yeah. and stuff so but it, they said they would and so he did yeah I have distinct memories of taking my youngest siblings to go watch this in theaters um, my parents went to see a movie that was like not kid appropriate and so I was like, oh, well, I'll just take them True to True Lies. No, wait. That was, Let, that was I will 90s. tell you what the movie is in a minute. Just wait. <laughs> that's part of the story. Okay. So I was oh, like, I will take um, Trevor and Brittany to Fantasia 2000. And I don't even know if they'd seen Fantasia. And they were very young at the time. Like, not too great young. Not for little kids. Yeah. No. And it's not a very long movie. Um, which was problematic because my parents went to go see The Green Mile. Oh, that's like three hours long. <laughs> yeah. So, so they you... both fell asleep in the, like, we went to the little lobby area and it was like a later showing or whatever. And they both just like fell asleep. And this was like pre-cell phone and everything. That's so why I was like, did they leave? Like, what's up? Because like, yeah, anyway. Oh, you didn't know that the Green Mile was three hours. I knew it was longer, but I didn't know it was that much longer. Nor did your parents, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, think, I don't know, they might have. But anyway, it was fine. But I just have distinct memories of taking them to Fantasia 2000. And I thought it was great, but I remember being like, they're not getting anything out of this other than, like, cool animation. I distinctly remember my dad being very, very, very excited mm. for Fantasia 2000 because I think Fantasia was one of his more... Yeah. Favorite, favorite Disney higher movies, up on the list, you know, yeah. higher up on the list for sure. Um, and it, you know what? It's it's more Fantasia, like yeah, exactly. Like That's it, exactly it wasn't right. bad, but like <sighs> coming on the heels of the Renaissance, <laughs> where like every Disney movie was an event, and like kids were super into it, having this like orchestral animation thing. It's tough sell. It's yeah. tough sell. Yeah. Um, we're skipping over the Tigger movie, Dinosaur. Oof. I was disappointed. We I didn't watch this until like a couple of years ago. I think we watched it during COVID lockdown, didn't we? I I watched it originally, and then apparently we've watched it again, and I still don't remember it at all. Like 
I I have no recollection okay. of this movie. That's, <laughs> all right. That that's all I that's all I, can, I didn't. There's still a ride for I it. Hate unfortunately. it. Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> I didn't hate it, but it was very like <laughs> forgettable. It was very forgettable. Apparently, uh, yeah. Emperor's New Groove. Oh, we're gonna talk about this now. Are I'm we? going through the list. Okay. <clears throat> oh, you're like getting serious. You're sitting up straight. It's a whole thing. Well, we're gonna talk about it. Okay. Well, we just watched it, mm-hmm. and I don't believe I had ever seen it before. Yes, I, I know I, I had. I might have seen. I might have seen it. I, I don't. I, I don't. I didn't remember it, and so then we watched it, and of course you see all the the memes from it and things like that. The animation, not great. But it was like funny. Kronk? Amazing. Very good. Yes. Love Kronk. Yes. Um, the villain of the movie... Yzma. No, it's not Yzma, actually. <laughs> okay. She is not the villain of this movie. The Emperor is yes, the villain of this enough. movie. That's fair enough. Uh, he, I, I can't root for him. He's a, he's a jerk, and he, he is forced to reform over... Like, he has many chances to reform... Like, I get it, you have kind of a trope, and he's like a spoiled, rotten brat, and, and then this bad thing happens to him, and he's supposed to learn from it. He, he he takes, like, six or seven times to learn from this horrible thing that happens to him, and it's, like, forced. He's a, he's a horrible person. Cannot root for him. Do I, not like him. I don't think he's the hero. He's not the hero. Hawkeye was the hero. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's, the, he's the hero. But he's the, the emperor is the villain. He's the <laughs> okay. villain. And the, and the villain kind of wins at the end. Like, he's, <laughs> like everything's happy. No, Yzma is, like, she sees, she, she, like, so you go to work and you have this, like, horrible boss that makes you do everything and is, like, absolutely useless and you get all bitter and stuff and you're like, can I get rid of this boss? That's what she's doing. <laughs> She she's not she, she might not be that much better when she gets into power because she's so bitter already, but... She's not gonna be worse. She's not. She's not gonna be worse. <laughs> I think Isma's awesome, personally, and she ends up as a kitty. She does, yeah. So one one of the few Disney villains not to die in a horrible yeah. way mm-hmm. until she gets like taken away by an eagle or something. <laughs> Kronk is the. I think he's also like the winner. I like his little demon and angel. I forgot about them. <laughs> his demon and angel are very cute. No, uh, Kronk Kron- <laughs> is definitely, like, far, far, far and away the best part of this movie. Yeah, no, he's great. And, no, I love Paco's relationship with his wife. Yeah, but that's, a, that's in the movie for, like, five minutes. Yeah, but I was telling you about how I was watching, I don't remember what it was, but it's, like, therapist react. It's, mm-hmm. it's an mm-hmm. ongoing series where um, a therapist who likes movies and a movie maker who he says, I'm a therapist who likes watching movies. And he's like, and I'm a movie maker who probably needs therapy is like their whole thing. Most people do. Yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, they react or to whatever topic it is. Right. They have a whole episode on up, by the way. Yeah. But it's not always Disney. But they had one and it was like actually really positive marriages mm. in movies are almost impossible rare. to find. Yeah, They're very, so, very, so rare. Rare, very rare. They're usually a plot <laughs> thing. So they one they mentioned was like in a quiet place. And they're like talking about how like that was interesting chemistry because actually they're married in real life and um, but that so they're like pointing out excellent depictions of things. And they said we hate to include it but like Carl and Ellie is like a perfect marriage depiction of a healthy that you can see. They have problems and whatever and yeah. Whatever. Um, and they said you can, and, have, you can have problems where it's not like a, the crux of your existence. Yeah, exactly. Like, mm. And but their whole thing was what the signposts were of a healthy relationship, and like trying to point to movies where they they had. And there were even some movies where like this is a terrible movie, but this is a really good relationship in the movie. But one, the one Disney one, because I mean, up is Pixar. But the one Disney one they mentioned, you're like, it is so funny because it's only in here for like a short little period of time. Very short. But yeah. their marriage. Hmm is like the healthiest Disney relationship <laughs> or one Which of is, the healthiest. Uh, to be honest with you, not saying a whole lot. There is some <laughs> terrible Disney marriages. All basically every single relationship in well, Disney is And is then the bad. other part Either they said or is it's like, really hard because a lot of them you don't see them after they're married anyway. Yeah. Um but anyway, so I just wanted to mention that they're an awesomely healthy marriage according to this therapist. 
And also, she's the only pregnant Disney character. Hmm. Best. Yzma's cool. Kronk is cooler. Kronk's Kr- awesome, but yeah, the the animation of this movie is not great, and you didn't like that style. Uh, it, it, you can tell it's cheap. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, Atlantis: The Lost Empire. Again, th- the animation in this is hit and miss. Like a lot of the characters and stuff, I from what I remember, pretty cheaply done. It's a cool. It's a cooler story though. It's very stylized. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I do like Atlantis. Uh, I like Atlantis a lot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, it would be my second, like I said, my second choice for the decade. I know you have some stuff to say about the next one. Lilo and Stitch. Uh, all, first of all, the best advertising campaign I think Disney has ever done. Because they had all of these trailers of, like, famous Disney moments. Yes. And, and then Stitch being, like, terrible. Like, <laughs> the big ballroom scene in Beauty and the Beast, I remember. And yeah. then you look up at the ceiling, which happens in the movie. But then they had Stitch, animated Stitch, like, running across the ceiling and dropping the chandelier. Yeah. So, okay. Here's the thing. <laughs> This is a hipster movie and a half. It, it is, and it's too much of a hipster movie now. Okay. Like, it's it's not bad. Um, you hit, you don't like it as much because it's so popular. N- yes. Yeah. Stitch, Stitch mm-hmm. specifically, is way too popular. Uh, the older sister, Nani. Nani's amazing. Is a really good character. Like, yeah. really cool character. Nani and David. So, there's another really healthy relationship. They're not even really dating. Mm. There's definitely, like... The, but he's There's like, tension, yeah. yeah, he is actually, if you were looking at like leading men in Disney or not even leading men, but Disney male characters that are like the love interest, yeah. he's one of the healthiest ones. Again, not saying a whole lot. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, uh, do you know who I think the healthiest one is? This is Tangent. Sven. Kristoff. Oh, yes. <laughs> the funny looking donkey. The funny looking donkey. You know what I meant. <laughs> yeah, Kristoff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Kri- Kristoff's awesome. Kristoff's amazing, especially in the sequel, which yeah, I think. Because I think of him Sven. In, he learned from Sven. He learned from to, Sven. How to, That's true. How to be a cool dude. His development in the sequel makes him, like, it was the best part of the sequel, I thought. Anyway. I, I don't remember a lot from the sequel. He, that was the one where he was just like, when. Um, but the moment was when. Anna, like Elsa's died and Anna's, Anna's trying to like save the day and he says and he finds her finally finally catches up to her he's been chasing her this whole like for a while and he says I'm here what do you need mm. and then she like apologizes for like whatever and he says my love's not fragile and I was just like Kristoff hmm. setting Disney male character expectations I mean he's no beast he didn't give her a library but still yeah, I mean, yeah <laughs> there you go but anyway David in Lilo and Stitch Right. Amazing. Not as amazing as Nani. Nani's amazing. So, and it, again, the, the, anima- Stitch overrated. the animation in Lilo and Stitch, not great. Love the music. The, yeah, the music's fine. It's, Elvis. It, it, yeah, exactly. So it's not really like Lilo and Stitch music. Well, there is original stuff, too. That's really <laughs> good. Um, the story's fine. It It's not underrated. It's actually overrated is the problem. Okay. Is the problem for me? Okay, personal. All right. Treasure Planet. I already said I love Treasure Planet. Um, there was such a great hipster millennial song that was the theme of it. Jim's theme. It was it wasn't a musical. It just had a song. I think played over like a montage or whatever. But it's even basically, Rocky had a montage. It's, true. it's basically steampunk treasure island in space. Yeah, it's it's like it's not even steampunk. It's like Space punk. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. It's cyberpunk. It's not quite cyberpunk either. Ah. But yes, that, that, that's the general idea. Mm-hmm. It's like they're still on a sailing ship, but it's in space. Yeah. And like stuff like that. Yeah. But it, yeah, it, it's your it's your Treasure Island story mm-hmm. in space with aliens. Yeah, and I like what they did with Long John Silver character. Mm-hmm. Um, specifically towards the end, they gave him a little bit more of a redemption arc than in the original novel, because it isn't just like... See, and I, I don't... I don't love that. I, I they, he didn't, Tra- they didn't turn him into a good guy. Yeah, Tra- Treasure Island was one of my more favorite books growing up, mm, actually. I didn't know that. I, It was one of the... Uh, first times you had like not a straightforward character right. 
like Long John Silver was when you meet him, he's like this cool dude mm-hmm. and all this stuff, and then he becomes not so good. Mm-hmm. And very interesting to me. Um, if you have a redemption arc, there kind of ruins that. Uh, uh, redemption arc's the wrong words though, because he isn't redeemed. He just the relationship between him and Jim is more mm. significant. Um, Brother Bear. Nope. Canadian. Sorta. Of. It's Canadian. It's supposed to be Canadian. Sorta. We have of. Bob and Doug McKenzie. Yeah. <laughs> Pass, horrible, terrible. I didn't awful. think it was terrible. It's not my favorite. <laughs> a, Brother Bear just better think it's Lucky Stars that Home on the Range exists. Cause no, I think Dinosaur's worse. Nah. I like Brother Bear. I'd I'd rather watch Dinosaur again because I don't remember it. <laughs> I remember Brother Bear and I remember. I how just horrible rewatched it, is. it like a year or so ago. I like Brother Bear fine. It's just horrible. not great. Horrible. Because next is Home on the Range. I like cows. This movie made me not want to like cows. You're like upset that you like cows. <laughs> I don't. I don't know who who looked at at Roseanne's body of work and was like, you know what we should do? Get her to voice a children's movie. Her voice is very soothing. <laughs> no. Roseanne has, like, one of the worst voices in Hollywood. Why would you have her be a voice actor? And not even, like, a caricature worst voice. No, just, like... She's she not could Fran have, Drescher. She, she could have been a, a villain. Mm-hmm. Or something, but no, not... No. It's just, <laughs> just, just a terrible movie. I hate it so much. I hate it. Chicken Little. Yeah, Chicken Little was fine. Yeah, it was fine. I thought it was good. Chicken Little is one of two characters that were main characters that wear glasses. Hmm. The other one's Mirabelle. What about, and, Mi- and what about Milo in uh, Atlantis? He wears glasses. Milo. 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 You're right. He wears glasses. That was a wrong stat I read. Yeah. Stupid. Milo does work. Milo in Atlantis. This is another reason Atlantis is awesome. Who voices him? I don't know. Michael J. Fox. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. He's a cool character. Mm-hmm. Uh because you identify with Milo a little, a little bit. bit. A little, little bit, bit. <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, he's, a, he's a nerdy, lanky dude, yeah. so, you know, whatever. <clears throat> I like when he's talking and then he's like, <laughs> pause for suspenseful effect. <laughs> mm. And then he's just practicing. Um, Meet the Robinsons we can't, is the only one I haven't seen. Well, I remember it's a there's commercial. A t- there's, a t- there's a T-Rex, yeah. You know. mm. Bolt. We saw Bolt in theaters. Yeah, I liked it fine. It was fine. Yeah. That's fine. Great. I'd watch it again. Yeah. Princess and the Frog, I really liked. This is another <clears> bit of a hipster one. It's like, Disentangled have, like, gained momentum, which is in the 2010s. Well, we watched Princess and the Frog in theaters mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. Uh, I cried. I was initially disappointed with it, but mm-hmm. I've, uh, yeah. like, in this episode, I said it was my favorite yeah. of the decade. It has some redeeming qualities to it. Mm-hmm. It still could have been better. And the music I, is amazing. And I'm kind of sad that it totally killed 2D animation mm. for forever. <laughs> um, I'm enjoying the embracing of it in terms of some things like Tiana's Palace, New Orleans Square. I'm curious to see what's going to happen with Splash Mountain. Um, I don't think it needs to be... I, I don't know. I, I think the world building in it is really cool. And like you said, the film's great. Yeah. Dr. Facilier is great. <laughs> is he going to be in the ride, though? I don't know. Probably not. He's on the other side now. Exactly. So, I don't know. Yeah. He does show up at a Oogie Boogie Bash, though, generally. Yeah. Um, and then this one actually came up before Princess and the Frog, but I added it to the end because it's uh, a Christmas carol. Creepy, uh, uncanny valley. Well, uncanny mo- valley. Mo-cap. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not as bad as uh, the... Polar Express, Other which Christmas was, one, which was done in the same animation style. The animation is a little better. Um, we we went to like a special. I was gonna talk. Yeah, I was gonna ask thing about. about yeah. Okay, um, but the movie, it's it's probably the the truest to the book. I was also gonna bring that up. Uh, there are adaption. certain elements in the book that never make it into movie adaptions. And they and they and they did it. Did it yeah. in this. So I kind of like it for that, but 
the animation style is like a bridge too far for me. Okay, it's, I it's really fine. it's fine. So we actually drove down to the states for a day because they had like a holiday train coming through in the middle of the summer before this movie came out as part of like a a tour like a advertising for this movie. Yeah, coming out. it was it was it was like a Christmas in July thing we went to. It was the Christmas Carol train, and they had all these yep. artifacts. They had some Charles Dickens stuff. It was and, very cool. And then they had like a big. It was like a ten minute preview in the yeah. in theater, like a um, inflatable theater thing. It was actually really cool. That I'm, yeah. I'm really glad we got to see it, and I'll always Me remember too. this movie because of that. Exactly. But this movie actually holds a higher place in my esteem because of that experience. Right, but. We live in a world where the Muppets Christmas Carol exists, so yeah, no, if we're going to watch a Disney Christmas Carol, <laughs> it's going to be that, or maybe, if you don't have a lot of time, then the, then Mickey, the Mickey one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this isn't on the list I, for I, that. I, we, we've seen it once, and not since then, so what does that tell you, yeah. right? <clears throat> uh, yeah, no, like you said, we live in a world Muppets Christmas Carol exists, mm. Yeah, which is technically owned by Disney now, too, so that is that is the Disney Christmas Carol movie that we watch. That is the Christmas Carol movie. That we watch, what are we talking about? Here? Literally <laughs> the Christmas Carol movie. Actually, if I'm not watching that, I might watch Scrooged. Meh. I, Mickey's, um, Mickey's Christmas Carol is also really good, but Muppet's Christmas Carol is my answer to your favorite Christmas movie. It's up It's up there. Yeah, it's my favorite. It's one of the movie. ones that I want to watch every year, yeah, and I me never, too. it never gets old. No. Nope. Like, I can watch, I can that, watch like, it a couple times. A couple times We here. actually do generally watch usually it a couple times. Usually we watch it a couple times. It's usually one of the first ones we watch in the holiday season, and one of the ones closest to the holiday itself. It's just super watchable. But yeah. if, if I was not allowed to watch that, and I really wanted to see A Christmas Carol, it, it would probably be like the original like Alistair Sims Oh, yeah, that's a really like, one, too. Like, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I actually like Mickey's Christmas Carol, like you said, if you don't have a lot of time. It's short. It's yeah. really short. You're like, oh, I have like a half hour here. Yeah. I'll just watch it. Yeah. Um, we didn't do this last time. I know we're running a little bit long, but I'm not going to ask you any kind of quiz or anything like that. Instead, you're going to come up with a drink. Yes. All right. I'm an alcoholic, so this works well. Okay. So this drink is going to be inspired by Home on the Range. Because oh. it was our answer to the least favorite. Oh, no. Okay. Because okay. <laughs> I was actually going to go pirates, but I'm like, well, that's easy. It's rum. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> it would be rum-based, yes. Yeah. Pirates would be rum-based, for sure. Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to make me... Oh, no, no, hold on. I Actually, I'm scratch that. I got a better one. Oh, man. I was using brain power already. Okay, well, you can come up with two if you want. <sighs> You're going to come up with a drink that's called the Michael Eisner. Oh, that's way harder. <laughs> I don't like this. I thought you were going to give me something like, give me a drink for Yzma... No, that would be fun though, because it'd be like a little purple. Yeah, it would thing. be. Pur it would yeah, definitely yeah. be purple. Like, okay, no, we're doing home on the ranch. Okay, I don't like your <laughs> your side. Is, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> home on the range. <coughs> so, we're gonna have. It's gonna be a root beer drink. Another root like beer. Like a like mm -hmm. a sarsaparilla mm -hmm. okay. type of situation. Does that make sense? Um, but we're gonna have some heavy cream. Okay. And butter ripple schnapps. That'd be good. Yeah. And, uh, like... Be better than the movie. There, there's gonna be some green sprinkles on top for the grass. Oh, okay. Just to make... Because it's, like, gonna be dirt on mm -hmm. top, and, and then... And then and grass on top of that. Yeah. The range. It's yeah, the range. It's the range. I like... I would like that. It's, and that's what it's called. It's called the range. <laughs> I'd like that. Do you do you remember our idea about half? We have a bunch of these. We're gonna like do a little. We're gonna do it. Yes, yeah. I, I am remember. I'm not. The, wait, we have two root beer ones, so you have to drink those. But uh, <laughs> this can this can also be done as a shot. Oh, okay. You do it as a shot. Mm -hmm. You do it as a shot. I would do it as a shot. Yeah, I would like enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It'd be like my chaser. <laughs> um, and you could also. Be, just because, like, the bitter taste of it, you could also just pound a, a shot of whiskey after. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no. Butterful schnapps and root beer is not bitter. It's, like, sweet and wonderful. No, I meant the bitter taste of the movie. That's, like, uh. replicates the bitter taste of the movie. <laughs> That's what I'm going for. Oh, I see. You're like, that was too pleasant. Here yeah, we go. Yeah. Okay, fair. But, like, low-shelf whiskey. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, wild turkey or something. <laughs> Anything to add about the 2000s? Uh, thank goodness for Pixar. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, hey? And some awesome live-action ones, actually. 
Pirates? Pirates. Pirates, yeah, pirates. Any world where there's pirates. But you also had, like, Princess Diaries, and you had Enchanted, Pi- and you had, we'll, like... We'll go with pirates. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Um, the first pirates. <clears throat> Apparently the whole trilogy came out in the 2000s, which, nah. Yeah, they're the first three. <laughs> now they're, they keep going, but we don't talk about the trilogy. The whole trilogy. Okay, fine. We talk about the first... Like, the first one's really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So contact us on our social media or through our website to chat and suggest trivia or say hi. Hi! Hi! Oh, wait. That is our show. Thank you, El Mule, who's responsible for the custom theme song you heard at the top of the show. You can find a link to his work at our website at disneya.wixsite.com slash podcast. And it's also where you can find a link to our social media accounts and our email. So if you are from James... Janesville. Janesville that is how you can Janesville, find us. Janesville, Wisconsin. Exactly. Home of the parks or something. Something. <laughs> I, did, I derailed you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. You can find us on Instagram at DisneyA.podcast or on Facebook at DisneyA. Um, you can find you can find DisneyA on Twitter, but it's not active anymore. So, you know. You can find DisneyA episodes on all of your favorites. It's, it's still active. It's just uh, our our auto-tweets uh, don't work anymore because Elon disabled any third-party thing. But the, the account's still there. Um, so you could, like, DM us there. It, it, all, all the previous live tweets are still there. Yeah, go find Brandon's High School Musical before X implodes or something. and, and Which is a distinct possibility. Yeah. I don't know. You can find Disney A episodes on all of your favorite podcast streaming platforms and on our YouTube channel, Adventures A. If you've rated or reviewed our podcast, thank you. And if you haven't yet, please do. And if you know someone who might like listening to us, be sure to recommend Disney A as well. And make them listen. For family. No. That sounded very... <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was just supposed to be ominous. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do you know what we're talking about next week? Um, tacos. I don't think that's it. Oh. <laughs> Darn. Yeah. Sorry. I would like to. <laughs> you can talk about tacos if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I might. <laughs> that might be my nerd thing. Tacos. Tacos. Okay. That's all right. <laughs> my favorite kind of tacos. Taco <laughs> toppings. Uh, I, I could go on. I could do an you entire do episode about tacos. Okay. But before you do that. <laughs> this outro is really off the rails. <laughs> okay. Let's just, let's just go. <laughs> so I'm Krista. And I'm Brandon. Until the next adventure. TTFN. Ta-ta for now. Thanks for listening to Disney, A. Eh? You've got a big head and a little arm.